Hey guys, Victoria Jones Griffith here, and this is my fifth lesson, the fifth V, the victory, finding your flow. So if you haven't watched my videos prior to this, I have an intro video, and then I have lesson one, two, three, and four on here with those four V's, and this is the final V, the fifth V, the victory my favorite one. All of my five V's are included at the end of my book that is up on Amazon, Victorious. And they're, each of them have, we've got the lesson, we've got the description, and then I've got a practice in there. I'm gonna do the fifth V tonight with the practice, and each of the videos includes that as well. But the book is not just about the five V's. The book is actually my story and my journey and I used those five V's along the way to heal myself and live a victorious life now after using those tools and that's what I'm bringing to you because for 20 years I focused on the physical workouts and the nutrition but still wasn't digging deep enough to figure out why I wasn't feeling good. And that was because there were lots of things internally that were going on that I had to let go of. And if you guys haven't read my book, I encourage you to pick it up, but I am a survivor, not a victim, of sexual abuse, assault, and physical abuse from different people. And it, it was a cycle that I was repeating and I finally learned how to break that cycle. So even as a health and wellness professional, I was still suffering internally with a lot of these things that I talk about in my book. So again, if you are not a victim of sexual assault or abuse, then this book I, I feel will still resonate and my story will still resonate with you if you have ever found yourself in a victimhood state of not feeling good enough, feeling like you're damaged goods, that you have to be perfect, it all goes back to that, and that's what sent me on that journey of, or that cycle of abuse to myself and at the hands of others, and my story is how I turned that around and went from victim to victory. So let's review the five V's real quick. The first V is the victimhood. I talked about how we have to get out of that, that mindset where that inner critic critic is telling us we are not good enough, we are not worthy enough, we are damaged goods, we feel stuck and we can't move forward. So we have to get out of victimhood. The second V is the validation and those were part of my, my tools and methods and techniques that I used in order to learn how to love myself. My journaling, I encourage self love notes to yourself sticky notes on the on the mirror. I share all that in lesson number two, the validation. And then lesson number three is the voice. And that lesson includes learning how to use your voice, step into your power, speak your truth, but also quiet your voice in order to go within and find your true authentic self and really what is your true authentic self. I talk about that in lesson number three, the voice. Then lesson number four is the vulnerability, most people cringe when they hear that word, but finding the right balance between being too vulnerable and not being vulnerable enough, the feminine side and the masculine side and all of that in between and finding balance there. And then the fifth V, yay, is what I'm talking about on this video and that is the victory and finding your flow. So let's dive in. What is the flow? Well, you might've experienced flow state or being in the flow, when you're doing an activity that you get completely immersed in, you get lost in, you lose track of time, and it brings you a lot of joy, and that inner critic goes away when you are in that state of mind. You also, uh, I also like to ask my clients, what moves you? So that's kind of my new assessment instead of the typical assessment about how long you've been working out, what do you like to do to work out, blah, 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 blah. My pre-screening with my clients is now what moves you. That helps me figure out 
a lot of things, but also what is going to keep you motivated if you are looking to get on a weight loss plan, a health and wellness plan, nutrition plan. That is where I start, which is different as a health and wellness coach. So getting into that flow state is actually addressing that right side of your brain. And we can't stay in flow state all the time, but being able to hack into it, tap into it on a consistent basis will bring more joy and happiness into your life. And you'll be, you'll find yourself being able to self motivate and self start, especially like on a Monday when you can't get going, you don't want to work out. You've had a, you've had a great weekend, long weekend, but then getting back on that diet, you just, it, it's harder to do. So getting into the flow state will help you with that. So to give you some research, so I know it sounds a little woo woo, a little hippy dippy. So, the doctor that, that did the research and put a name to it is Dr. Mihai Chikson Mihai. It did study groups and case studies to show that we can experience probably our happiest states in our lives if we can tap into this flow state and then and all the benefits that go along with it. So let's talk about some of the benefits that go on with being in the flow. And by the way, another name for flow state is getting into the zone. Athletes use it. Runners have experienced it because they can get that runner's high. I do not get high off of running, so that's definitely not me getting into the flow state with running. I dread it and I'm thinking about that to-do list all the time and, and I'm in pain and all of that. So we'll talk about when you know you're in flow state, but if you're a runner and you can just get lost running for hours, then you have experienced flow. That's otherwise known as a runner's high. If you're a musician, you play an instrument or you sing, they call it getting into the pocket in the mus music arena, then you've experienced flow. Also artists, painters, people that draw have experienced getting into the flow. Also finding that sweet spot is another way I like to think of it because that's really how we live a victorious life if we learn how to get into the sweet spot of life. So again, the benefits of getting into the flow, you will experience increased energy and clarity, which, hey, who doesn't want that? So this is a way to increase your energy, increase your clarity without those stimulants, the coffee, all the things that, you know, try to boost your energy or overeating. Maybe you do that to kind of get that that pick me up chocolate if you're addicted to chocolate. So what is happening in the brain is those happy neurochemicals, which I talk about on each of those videos, especially video number one, the victimhood and neuroplasticity and neural pathways, change your neural pathways, increasing those happy neurochemicals. And let's review what those are, your dopamine, your oxytocin, your serotonin, and your endorphins. Increasing those happy neurochemicals will help decrease those unhealthy habits, like maybe having those extra glasses of wine in the evening, overeating anytime during the day, especially you night eaters, and any other addiction, sex addiction, Anything that you feel is an unhealthy habit that you are trying to get that, that high, I call it that dopamine hit, or really any of those neurochemicals that, that raise those levels in your brain. And we, again, we want to do it naturally, and this way is free if you learn how to tap into it. Also, you might lose track of time if you know what activity that is, and that is because you are in the present moment you're in the now when I talk about that in lesson number three with mindfulness in meditation when you are mindful you're in the now and in the present moment and you have a lot more clarity in those distractions that that monkey brain goes uh, calms down it's not all over the place and you don't have that to-do list going through your head and you are present that inner critic goes away too when that happens. So your confidence goes up in whatever you're doing. And then you also experience more intrinsic motivation. That means you're doing these activities for yourself because you actually enjoying them, not 
doing them for other people or your personal trainer because she's gonna be proud of you for going on that run, which you can't stand. If that is not your flow, that is doing it for somebody else other than yourself and you really don't enjoy it, that is not flow state. So again, trying to figure out what that is for you is the key in tapping into it. So how do you find your flow? The best way, if you don't already have like an inkling, if you're not an artist, a musician, a writer, some of us get into the writing flow. I know when I was writing my book, Victorious, I was definitely in the flow because I lost track of time and didn't really remember what I wrote or how I wrote, wrote it until I went back and looked at it and was like, wow, I had something to say. Well, when I was not in the flow, was very aware of it, was during the publishing process and editing. That was very stressful and I had a lot of anxiety during that period. So that's the key. You want an activity. Doesn't have to be working out. Again, writing isn't and that is hacking into the flow. You want an activity that's challenging but not so challenging that it causes you anxiety and to shut down and that inner critic to pop up going, you can't do this, this is stressful. That is like me running, not me in the flow. So dancing is where I feel in my flow and where I lose track of time and in the, the side benefit is that it's also a great workout too. So you can get the flow and you can get a good workout at the same time where I noticed I was getting into the flow was when I was teaching classes, dance classes, in the morning several days a week, and I noticed during the afternoon, I forgot about lunch. Trust me, I will never forget about a meal. I'm always thinking about food. Most of us as health coaches are, if you're a nutrition coach or a personal trainer or foodies. I never forget a meal, but after teaching a class that got me into the flow, I forgot about lunch. It was not that I recommend it, but it was kind of cool. I wasn't mindless eating and I was more productive. I got so many errands run after that. My clients even noticed it because I'd come in and not be tied to their workout program like this and forgetting it. I could read it once and then regurgitate it and leave them through and not have to look at it again. That's the power of the mind. It's pretty awesome. So more efficiency in work, who doesn't want that? And then a joyful kind of giddy state of mind with your clients, with your family, at work, when you go back to work, so that's when I noticed there was something going on and did the research and figured it out it's flow states. So again, like I said earlier, you can't stay in the flow all the time, but hacking it into it, tapping into it consistently will keep those levels up of happiness and joy during the week and the other days that you might not be doing that activity. So again, how you find it if you don't know what yours is, is go take a class. You could take, go to a, a, a meetup group or a networking event that is, is free and start experimenting. I know there's a park here in Dallas that does like Friday night ballroom dancing and they do a different type of dance every single week. And that, I've always wanted to go to that, but I've had clients or commitments, but that would be, hmm, that kind of piqued my interest. I've only done ballroom dancing once, but I know it's challenging but really, if I'm doing it for fun, it's not going to stress me out. That could get me in the flow. Cooking. So again, it doesn't have to be a physical activity. Cooking, which stresses me out, might pique somebody else's interest, might get lost in it, and might realize, oh, I'm not actually eating when I'm cooking. I'm not overeating when I'm cooking. I'm enjoying it. I'm doing it for myself, not for others. I'm doing it for my pleasure. And gardening is another one being able to get outside a lot of these flow patterns happen when you're outside in nature and like we're intended to be mountain climbing hiking i know a lot of people that get into the flow hiking and i know we don't go out and just climb mountains but even just going on a nature hike or going to the trail again you could just be walking and get into the flow my artists out there i have several clients that are artists that put the art to the wayside because they had job jobs that they had to do, just like me and my job job and putting dance to the wayside. I don't recommend that. I always say, keep it up to these young girls. You know, don't give up your, your creative gifts. And by the way, we all have a creative side and that's what I've been doing with my clients for over 20 years is helping them unleash that. That is your feminine side. I talked about that last week on my Fourth V, vulnerability. So when we tap into our feminine side, we find our creativity. We all have it. 
So back to tapping into it in my artists, my artists I see get lost in their art or they might forget about time and look up and go, oh my gosh, I've got a session. I forgot and you know, I, I need to, 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 they have to stop or they end up rescheduling because they're so lost in the flow. And that is the only time where I'm like, okay, you can cancel on me because you're in the flow. I see what you're saying. Don't always, all use that as an excuse to cancel or reschedule a workout. But again, if you can bring the physical side with the flow together in your flow state, then that is a great way to keep your workout goals on point. But if it's not something that's physical, whether it's writing, whether it's cooking, then that increase in those happy neurochemicals will carry over to the next day and the next day on the days you're not in the flow so that you can self-start and self-motivate with your nutrition plans, with your workout plans. So again, the inside translates to the outside. So that is flow and finding your flow in a nutshell in the fifth V, the victory, and we're all going towards victory, victimhood to victory. So until next time, and I plan on doing more videos to add to this, be victorious.